Last time. Ooh. They are coming. Are they? Ah! Oh. <laughs> This time. Hello, all of my little baby bunnies, and welcome back to Let's Play Season 2 of The Last Door. This is Karen with Karen and Bob Gaming. And when we last left off, we did so many things. We found some, we found this asylum and we explored it and we talked to lots of people and we figured out where to go find Alexandra Dupre. <laughs> Still don't know how to say his last name, but fuck it. <laughs> Um, and I just realized that these are Rorschach tests. I'm outside of an asylum. I could maybe show these to some of the people inside. So I'm going to go talk to them real quick. <laughs> I don't have a way to get into their, like, living quarters, it doesn't seem like. But I might be able to go actually talk to some of the people. So let's go do that. No. What about her? No. There's nothing here I can like grab or look at. What about you? No? What's in here? Was this where the guy was strung up on the table? Show enough. Okay. Expression of unbearable horror on his face. Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, window is closed abruptly. Can I put it back? Let's keep it closed. So the room stays dark. I can see clearly through the mirror. Oh, okay, so there's something more important than just the fact that I found a penny in here. Or whatever it is I found. A shilling? Sixpence? Huh. That's curious. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but a dog was barking. And it was loud. Man, we have a fucking abundance of dogs in this apartment complex. Good god lord, there's so many. And and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't mind that people have dogs. I fucking love dogs. Dogs are beautiful and wonderful and gorgeous creatures. Um, but when your dog is barking at 11 p.m. at night, right above my head, and I just wanna go to sleep, because our apartments have four um, stories. And, uh, so we have people below and above us. And, um... <sighs> it's just not cool. <laughs> it's not cool when your yappy yap fuck dog won't shut up. <laughs> Alright, let's go to Paul Street. This was apparently where, um, Alexandra Dupree lived, uh, when stuff happened. Where he used to live, maybe? This door is number 24, I'm looking for 26. So this might be 25, I'm guessing. Oh, 26, place I was looking for, but the door's bricked up, I must find another way in. Window? Windows are so thoroughly cemented over that it almost mixes with the facade. Wow, okay. Same? All right, it's up there. Paul Street, it ends here at this corner. Okay. Ooh, I'm suddenly very cold. Hmm. <laughs> the ruins of an old chapel apparently destroyed by fire. Alright, hang the fuck on. I'm gonna go get- I need a blanket. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Okay. 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 Alright, blanket. Blankets are good. Okay. <sighs> Alright, ruins of an old chapel. Um. Hang on a second. Was this where that tree was? I'm not in Aberdeen. I'm in London. So no, it wasn't, but is this like a similar story? In the last season, there was a section where a tree was growing through a mess of wooden planks and the remains of benches and chairs. Oh! Is this what happened at the very beginning of this episode? Is, is this it? That's all there is here? So nothing else I can click on. Can I go further this way? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Is this a person? There's someone on their knees praying. 
their faces covered by a hood. Whoa. Wooden cross remains almost intact. An improvised altar covered in candles. Oh, you can hear him whispering. With this candle, I can light my way through the dark. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Creepy. Looks like this hole leads to the building next door. Okay, I see. I see your game, game. <laughs> Alright, so now... Alright, auto-equips my candle. Great. Oh, game, why do you keep putting me in creepy situations? At least it's daytime. <laughs> if I was playing this at night, if something jumped out at me right now, I'd scream. <laughs> oh, that felt great. Okay. All right, what's going on here? Okay, so nothing important, just a creepy hallway to add to my ambiance. Thank you, game. Love it. This must be the interior of the bricked-up building I saw on the street, Mr. Dupree's former residence. This, one, this picture fell off the wall. I cannot tell who is depicted in the portrait since it is so badly damaged. It seems someone crushed it into the floor. Wow. Fireplace? There is something among the ashes. It is a piece of paper. It looks like some kind of message, but there is only half here. One half here. The paper has been carefully burnt. It looks like Latin. Okay, so I'm probably supposed to look for the rest of it. A military medal. There is a relief of Her Majesty the Queen and several pieces of metal engraved with the names of battles unknown to me. Oh, take that, take that, take that. Yes, yes, I was going to say, the military man at the hospital. I'll take this with me. Maybe it'll mean something to one of Alexandra's fellow uh, patients in the hospital. Yes, good. And we can get him talking to us. What's this? There's a piece of paper on the table. Perfect. The paper shows some seemingly random letters. It seems as half of it is missing. Okay, so that's obvious. The heat from the candle has revealed a set of letters painted with invisible ink. Okay, so now we put them together. The whole message is readable now. It seems to be Latin. Duh. I think it reads, I've seen a dead eyelid move. Vidi. Yeah, I. Okay. I, I came. I... What do you reach? Yeah, sorry. I took Latin. Um, I went to a magnet school in the fourth and fifth grade. And uh, they required you to take Latin. So <laughs> I was like trying to remember the the eensy weensiest bit of Latin that I could um seen. I and seen. I, I recognize those words, at least. What's this? One man in high rank uniform, he's missing an arm. Was Alexandra missing an arm? I don't remember. Did I miss anything over here? There's nothing on this wall, right? Oh, there is. The door is bricked up. Oh, that's the front door. Okay. All right. Uh, anything in this bookshelf? A few books remain in the shelf, mostly doubtful treatises. Uh, treatises? Treatises? Treat. I'm not sure exactly how to say that. Um, in chemistry and alchemy. Among the titles are Trimethius's Du Lapid Philosophico. Gaber. Gabers. 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 I'm not sure how to say that. De Invention Veritatis. The anonymous work Turbo Philosophorum. And Ludwig Prin. Uh, Ludwig Prin's Mystery of the Worm. I can't open this, can I? A large metal safe. Nope. Looks like the safe is working fine. I should give it a try. Or
I'm not sure how to open that. No. I've seen a dead eyelid move. Hang on. Ah, that is smart. That is really smart. It's the Roman numerals. Okay, so it's six, one, uh, four, and five. Six, one, four, and five. Hang on. Just because I know I'm gonna forget because like my brain just stops working as soon as I do Let's Plays. <laughs> if you if you don't know that, go watch any episode of me playing Portal 2 with Vaguely Someone. <laughs> I am never more stupid <laughs> than when I uh, play Let's Plays. Like, ever. What is that? Four? Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't even remember what Roman numerals look like. Okay. That's a really smart puzzle. I, I, I'm glad I thought to look. Because I was like, there's no way... I, initially, I was trying to see if I could hear the sound of the tumblers. I don't think that's how it worked, though. Okay, so let's start again. Six. One. Oh, yeah. Okay, you can hear the tumblers. I just didn't go far enough. Here we go. Okay. I thought there were only three. Most, um, like, padlocks only have three codes. It is empty. Wait. This is not a safe, but an entrance to a passage. It is completely dark. The only way to know where it leads is by crawling in. Bro. Why don't we do that? Why don't we fucking do that? <gasps> oh, it's m like a bunch of machinery. Oh, weird. Oh, this is weird. Mathematic formulae written fast and carelessly. Some of these symbols I've never seen before. Man, I bet you I've seen them. A list of numbers. It looks like some kind of calendar or timetable. I'm sorry. Calculus 2 is actually kicking my ass. I am so frustrated with this class. And I, my teacher is a good guy. I love him. He's like really smart and funny. But he's too smart for me. <laughs> He's been doing software, mathematical software engineering for 40 years. He has his PhD in mathematics. Four chairs forming a circle as if the hideout served as some sort of meeting place. So he'll just like talk and write at the same time as talking and I'm desperately trying to write down all the notes that he's writing down while also understanding what he's saying to me. And it's impossible. There's no way to do it. It doesn't happen. Anyways, <laughs> that guy is dead. Or it's a ghost. What is that? I hate his face. A strange machine built out of wood, steel, and glass. I wonder what its function could be. <gasps> There's someone sitting here wearing a horrible mask and yellow robe. He is not moving. Ah! It is only a yellow robe. There is no body inside at all. What can be the meaning of this? Does that mean I have a mask now? I don't know how I feel about the fact that you were just saying Latin at me. Or Spanish. Maria? Uh, maybe Spanish. 
That was very disconcerting. Okay. Uh, this blanket is not staying where I want it to stay. That's probably what jackets are for. Ugh. Okay. Alright, what do we got here? <laughs> oh god, that felt great. Okay. Oh, hello, violin music. Cello. That's a cello. Never vise altar, covered in candles. Okay, so can't do anything else with those? No? No? Can I burn this cross? I don't know why I just thought to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I probably needed all of those things to do something back at the, uh, at the asylum. So give me two seconds to put some yogurt in my mouth. So I was in the middle of eating yogurt when I started this, so I don't know why I didn't finish it. <laughs> I was fucking hungry, okay? Okay. And I, I don't need to go in here, do I? Okay. And there's nothing else I can look at? Nope. Alright, let's go. It's interesting that it was so dark over on Paul Street. But it's like daytime over here. Oh, it's London. England's always fucking rainy and just and sad. <laughs> right? <laughs> One of my British friends is gonna be like, fuck you. <laughs> they're gonna watch this and they're just gonna be like, fuck you. <laughs> um Okay, I think first things first, I'm gonna go talk to um the military inmate. I'm gonna give him this medal. This medal, I had one just like this. Got it after the battles of Lang's Neck and Majuba Hill. Majuba Hill? I don't know how you'd say that. In 1881, a decade ago now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> A decade ago now, for distinguished con- dis <laughs> distinguished <kernder. laughs> In the field, it said. What a farce. So you were in the army, as I thought. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Wakefield. Sergeant William Conhull, Her Majesty's Sixth Light Infantry. Are you another one of those alienists? Do you doctors not realize that cowardice cannot be cured by your arts? Why are they keeping you here? The doctors say I suffer from a nervous disorder. I believe this is a term for when they themselves, with all their learning, do not know what to say. But I know the true name of my sickness. It is pure cowardice. That's sad. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. His name is Alexandre Dupree. Yes, I did know a man by that name. We met briefly. He was here when I arrived. What do you know about him? He was a proper lad, educated. He listened closely to the stories of the other inmates, but he kept his own to himself. We talked a lot. He was very close to Miss Cohn, too. I think they got here at the same time, but when he left, he did so alone. I wonder what has become of him since. Who is this Miss Cohn? She is a patient here. The lady with the tempestuous character. That's a great word! Oh, fucking love it. I'm going to start using that in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, <laughs> you may have encountered her already. She's not been the same since Mr. Dupree left. No. She always sits to the side, alone and silent. Alone? Alone? I forgot how to speak. Alone and silent. I doubt you could talk to her at all, even if you tried. She sees things, or at least she thinks she does. What did you talk about, you and Mr. Dupree? We talked about my time in the South of Africa. I don't like to talk about that, but he somehow made me want to. He was persuasive. He was very interested in one specific story. 
almost obsessive about it. Ooh, I know. He wanted to know every little detail. Could you tell me that story? I'm trying to find a patient of mine who has gone missing, and this could be my only hope of finding him. I don't like to relive these memories. A missing patient, you say? I... All right. Maybe my story will be of some use then. It happened during the Battle of uh, Majuba Hill. I'm sure you've heard of it. In March of 81. The attack of the Boer army had taken us by surprise, and our regiment was forced to split up. We quickly found ourselves alone, just a few men lost in the barren plain. But I don't want to bore you. No, sir, you certainly aren't. Please continue. Ooh, I'm going to go into his memories. As I said, we were few, and we were sure the enemy was lurking out there. In the cold air of dusk, a thick fog formed quickly, masking everything around us. We could barely see each other. Whoa. Then the others started to disappear into the fog, which was getting thicker and thicker. I could still hear their footsteps for a while, then nothing. I called their names aloud, even though I knew I shouldn't. I felt something in there not far, a murmur or a beating, something alive waiting. I couldn't help walking towards it. All of a sudden, my feet felt something in the mud. A body. They were all there, dead. Only Captain Skid was missing. Then the mist cleared out. What had happened? I never knew for certain. I didn't see anything, or if I did, my mind refused to bear such memories. What happened to Captain Skid? When he finally regained consciousness, it was like someone else looked out at us through his eyes. I guess whatever happened affected him, changed him. I knew he came back to London. Mr. Dupree asked me of his whereabouts. Maybe he tried to contact him to hear the rest of the story. He was quite preoccupied by it. Hmm. Do you know where I can find Captain Skid? The last I heard from fellow veterans, he had lost himself to a frenzy of alcohol, opium, and bad company. The downward spiral led him, as many others, to a wretched nadir, a dirty hole, deep in St. Giles' rook rookery, known as the Crimson Nest. Mayhaps you will find him there. Alive even if you are lucky. Here, this is a picture of our regiment. You can see him there. Alright. So I got more places to go. I got more people to see. I'm, I'm not quite done here, though. I want to, um... Hang on. Let me look at this again. Miss Cohn is very upset. Please do not distress her further. Okay. <gasps> it is the isolation word for you this time, madam. The face of the playwright! The face of the playwright! I knew I had this for a reason. Wow. Is this over here? It is odd that this only this window is shuttered. The curtain casts a mottled shadow, shadow over the corner of this room. Oh, it's probably because she was sitting here. Wow. I did not expect that. Is he still in here? Yep. The man is striking the gro- Blah. <laughs> The man is striking the glass strongly with his fist. His expression is of pure hate. I don't think I can- s 
Uh, excuse me. I don't think he can see me, but I feel that somehow he knows I'm here. No? No? Okay. I wasn't sure if I could actually do anything with him. Okay, so I now have a different place to explore. I don't think going back to Dupree's house will do anything for me. Because the only other thing I've gotten is this photograph, which... Oh, hello. That poor woman. They must have taken her to the isolation ward. Ooh, maybe they left the door open. Ooh, maybe I can go look. Maybe I can go... <laughs> the door open I'm going and looking I'm going I'm gonna go look oh yay I have a new item in my inventory what happened oh I probably got a card for learning how to do things room 102a Hello, my name is Wakefield. The butterfly is not what it seems. Excuse me, but what butterfly? There is more after the scarab. Does he mean these? Is this the butterfly you talked about? It displays its wonderful colors, fills your eyes with awe. But this is only a show, beyond the veil. His body crawls on the dirty ground, hides in the darkness, and transforms in other of its lies. So what would this be? Its dark body creaks and rustles with its blind movement. Slowly, step by step, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. What about this one? It will come. Whatever you do, it will cry out loud, looking at you from everywhere at the same time. What about this one? Him. Him? His mask. My mate from the other room used to scream at night, always told us he could feel something under his bed, a presence, an eyeless gaze. Okay. Oh, he just straight up took those cards for me. Okay, so that's all I needed them for. Not much light manages to meet, to meet this room. Are there trees inside of this room? That seems very odd. Okay. All right, I'm trying to make this video a full 30 minutes, so we'll, we'll keep going until we're done. Room 104A. Uh, just a few more moments. Oh, this is weird. An old pendant on the dresser. It looks valuable. Is there nothing else? No. Who's watching from the other side of these bars? Freaked out. <laughs> Room 106A. An expensive looking piece of furniture, there is nothing on it. An impressive painting of a lovely maiden. It is equipped with a fitting, magnificent frame. No? Okay. Is there someone outside? A mirror covered in dust. I wonder what things it has seen in this room. Could this be the room of the patient's mate, who was afraid of the presence under his bed? Ooh. Oh my god. Was someone... There's something written on the wall. One of them came last night. I knew what it actually was because of the sign it carried. The sign of the eye. I killed it and hid it well. If more come, they will not find their friend nor its eye. The doors bricked up. Why would they do such a thing? The window is sealed too. Almost no light can reach the room. 
I doubt anyone has slept in this place in a long time. I, let me read this again. The sign of the eye, I killed it. So the eye of the bird was something they talked about a lot in the first season. I'm not sure what the significance of this room is. That's very weird. Okay. Alright, let's... Let's go ahead and end it there. We'll keep exploring the asylum. Oh, this is actually really cool. <laughs> I'm having a great time. So I'm going to pick this up pretty much immediately after stopping here. Um, but I'll see you guys. Oh, that's probably where they put her. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Um, thank you all so much for watching. As always, it's much appreciated. I'm having such a good time playing this game. I love games like this, all the mystery and the pointy and the clicky and the finding things out in the story. It's so great. Um, make sure to check out my Facebook and my Twitter. Twitter more than Facebook. I use Twitter all the time. Um, and uh, 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 what else do I want you to do? Oh yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. Those things all super duper help if you want to do any of those things. And I'll see you guys in the next video for The Last Door, Season Dose. Bye.